Today I will be showing you how to uh, make a bootable USB stick for non-UEFI machines, so just a legacy BIOS uh, machine. And this is uh, what I do, and uh, it's n uh, some steps may not be necessary, but I find that this is uh, uh, sh uh, surefire uh, without uh, any fail uh, in my experience. So first thing I do with a USB stick uh, which is mounted on SDB2 SDB is go ahead and fire up the uh, G parted and then we're we'll going to SDB right now it's mounted mounted so we need to unmount it uh, so let's see we, we should get a warning so l we're gonna have to create a file uh, a partition we're gonna have to get a yeah non UEFI you need to uh, make it a partition table type of MS DOS which is fine so we'll go ahead and uh, that wipes out the uh, USB uh, stick so now we're gonna ha what we're gonna do is create uh, um, a uh, space a partition so we'll go ahead and uh, here uh, we can make uh, space enough for a couple of uh, uh, Puppy Linux uh, distros. Uh, 2000, uh, 2000 megabytes should be more than enough, and this will be a space for pups. And then we'll go ahead and create one, and then here we'll uh, put in a, we'll make a uh, a save folder uh, partition which is really not necessary but this is what I'm used to doing and then I usually give a, a fairly significant amount of space uh, sometimes I end up having multiple uh, uh, save uh, folders uh, so we'll make this a save folder and then uh, rest of it pretty much is for data so store data uh, pictures photos or music or whatever so we'll leave a little bit for uh, around 500 for a swap file so we'll call this a store storage and then here uh, I prefer just uh, making an extended partition just in case later on I want to partition uh, 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 more so I want to create extra partition that it uh, it doesn't interfere so I'll just go ahead and put this into a li uh, Linux swap and then we'll go ahead and write all this information now that took a couple minutes uh, let me just give you a background and information on the USB uh, stick here. So it's uh, roughly 16 gig uh, size and I've uh, divided into the partitions which I sort of feel like is uh, good enough for two different puppy uh, uh, operating system to be uh, to be used with. So the partition uh, for save a folder you really don't need separately but this is what I like to do um, and last thing before you uh, finish with the uh, G part of this you need to make sure that you put a um, uh, boot flag on manage flag and uh, manage and then get a little tick on the boot so then you can close and then now you should be left with uh, uh, several partitions as we just saw so uh, next is we need to open up the first partition here and then what we'll do is put in uh, the files that uh, uh, so for example what we'll do is we'll put in uh, files you need to boot a uh, fossa pup so I have it here and then what you need in this USB uh, uh, puppy is to go ahead and
put in all the SFS files, S3, 4. In addition, you need INIT and VM lens. And put it in FP64. So we'll go ahead and put it there. And then so that way we have an option of uh, putting in Bionic Pup32, for example, later on. So we'll go ahead and put that into that folder. But for demonstration purposes, I'll just deal with a single operating, uh, a puppy Linux uh, operating system of Fossa Pup. That took about four or five minutes, so we'll go ahead and, uh, so this is a USB stick and we don't need this anymore. What we need to do is set up a, uh, a grub uh, bootloader, so we'll go ahead and uh, get into uh, setup. And then, uh, let's see, oh, so grub for DOS is what we need. So we'll go ahead and start that. And uh, we have the uh, uh, USB stick here, and we'll only search in this device, and then uh, we give it OK. What this will do is give you, uh, give you a menu list, and uh, so, so this is all fine. And uh, we'll take care of it. We don't have Windows installed, so we'll take care of it in a minute. So we'll go ahead and uh, let it write. So it writes the menu list, and we're going to have to edit the menu list. And we'll go ahead and just delete the Windows uh, information here. And then we'll also shorten the time. And w since I only have a single. Uh, Fossa pup uh, distro, you can y actually make this uh, 0 0.1, it will boot faster, but we'll just go ahead and make it uh, 2 for now, and then uh, and then save that. And then that's okay, so it's all done. Now uh, it should be uh, bootable in another machine, but we need to uh, safely e uh, unmount. So, so now, now you can uh, uh, take the uh, USB stick out safely. Uh, USB stick. Uh, so uh, you're gonna get a, uh, a quick setup screen as is shown here, and I'll go through it quickly. So this is uh, US uh, English. In my case, and uh, I live in uh, Western uh, Western U.S. and San Diego, so I put uh, I elected to go with the U.S. Uh, Pacific and English, obviously in firewall enabled and time from internet. I'm already connected to the uh, Wi-Fi, so uh, we'll go ahead and give it an OK. And then, uh, although uh, it's not showing now, uh, it's very important to set up the time correctly. So the time, time wizard. Uh, so what I like to do is uh, synchronize with the time, uh, time server. Synchronize your clock at each time, uh, system startup, and synchronize the time server initially. So that sets up subsequent uh, boot and uh, timing issues. Uh, so synchronize with your, uh, each system startup should be uh, ticked and exit. So now, now pretty much set up. And at this point, what you need to do is reboot. When you reboot, uh, you, you should get a choice of where do you want to save a folder to be placed. And what you want to do is put it, uh, put it here on the USB stick, so SDB2. So right now, right now there's uh, no entry, but uh, when w if you've done it correctly, you should see a uh, save folder here. 
so this is sort of a critical step in that when you are at this stage and you want to uh, reboot you want to make sure you do go through the save uh, save uh, uh, dialog after s uh, saving the save folder yet I'm getting this uh, uh, quick setup screen again and also the Wi-Fi uh, didn't connect so so it's not using the uh, save folder so we'll take a look at save a folder within it and see there is that uh, save folder I named the YouTube so but it's n it didn't load apparently it says that's why we're getting the uh, a quick uh, setup screen again so I think the problem may be uh, here in the menu list. We'll go ahead and open this up in Genie. So what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is uh, specify where the save folder is to this grub uh, menu list uh, under the kernel line. P save equals capital save this is the label of the partition that I would I gave when I was setting it uh, setting up the uh, G parted within the colon and then within that there is uh, a save folder here within that save folder and that's where this uh, uh, save the uh, uh, foster pup save uh, folder should be looked for so we're gonna spe specify that uh, that parameter here and then save it and let's reboot again this time when when I'm rebooting when it asks again for save uh, whether I want to save it we don't we want to say no we just want it uh, to uh, reboot and then uh, see if he can find the this save folder this time now after that uh, parameter uh, has been uh, uh, changed or added in the menu list here now everything is working as expected you can uh, the uh, Wi-Fi automatically started and then uh, we don't get the quick uh, setup screen anymore and in addition we have this icon that let you click and save to the uh, uh, save folder anytime and uh, and also gives you a, a choice of whether we're going to save it or not when you boot 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 up again